Hey friends, this is Wendy with Love and Stampin'. I am so excited you're here with me today. We are gonna be using a couple stamp sets from the Rabbit Hole Designs. Uh, this is the little cute fox stamp set, and then I'm also using that poinsettia and pinecone stamp set. Now, I made this card in September, and I recorded this video in September, but I never released the video, so we're taking a step back in time here and I decided to voice over this video for you because um, the month of November with the rabbit hole designs as a design team member I can share new projects but I can also share some projects I've already shared so even though I shared a photo of this project I never showed the um, video anyway what I'm doing here is I'm taking a piece of my grid paper from My Sweet Petunia and I'm stamping out what it is that I want to do. And I left this part of the video in to show you how plans change. So I'm stamping on some masking paper and cut, gonna cut out this little fox and mask him off. And my original idea was to stamp some poinsettias in the background behind the fox, but I thought it was hideous. So this is why I tried it on scratch paper first. I thought it just looked too busy and it was weird. And in my head, it, I was trying to go for a look that was like, um, like poinsettias on the ground type thing. It just didn't work. And so I totally scrapped the idea and I went ahead and did something different, which I ended up loving. This is probably one of my very favorite cards I've made using the Rabbit Hole Designs products. I just think it turned out beautiful and I was super happy with the results. So first I'm gonna stamp this little fox with his scarf on and we are just gonna make a wintry scene um, around this little fox. And so I'm stamping him in Hero Arts Intensified Black Ink and I'm gonna stamp him down a couple of times just to make sure those lines are nice and dark and solid. And then we are gonna cut a little hill from my masking paper. I was able to save my mask of the fox from my grid paper, so I'll add my little mask over the top of the fox, and then we'll cut that little hill from masking paper and add that mask over the top of the fox as well. And then we'll start our ink blending. So we're gonna ink blend a background for this little fella that looks like he is just in the middle of the most beautiful little wintry blizzard. And I really love how this turned out. So getting him masked off and then getting his little hillside masked off for him, which will be the snow that he's standing on. Now, the reason I left the front part of that video in is just because I wanted to show you that like, a lot of online content creators for card making, they try stuff and do different stuff before they commit to an idea. So don't always think that just because you're seeing the finished edited video that the person just sat down and came up with that. 99% of the time, I believe that we are working on ideas in the background, maybe sketching them out. In my case, I sometimes even have to stamp them out, especially when I'm making a scene card. I kind of already had the inkling in my head. Oh, really quick, back to the card. So here I'm going over, I'm using Stampin' Up! ink to do all my ink blending, and then I'm going over it with that stencil that you just saw. Then I'm gonna go over the background again with more ink to like push back those snowflakes because I don't want those snowflakes to be super dark and prominent. I just want them to kind of be like a suggestion in the background. So they turned out absolutely beautiful. And I just wanted to make sure that you knew that I did that step because it's kind of a big step. So this is fine tech glimmer paint and I'm just getting my aqua painter wet dipping it in and then flicking splatters of it onto the background and dabbing it off with a paper towel and this just again adds more texture more interest beautiful little um, shiny splatter spots that are supposed to kind of look like snow and I just continue to kind of build this and then we're gonna um clean it off and remove the masks from this 
cute little project. And then we're just going to set this piece aside. I think I do my stamping next. Oh, here I'm bringing in my gel pen and we're going to add even more little snow dots. So we're just doing a variety of things to like make that background really interesting. Then we'll remove the masks and get ready to do the next steps. So for the ink blending, I used um, Starry Sky, uh, Orchid Oasis, and Tahitian Tide. And then that stencil that I used is, I think it's called Abundant Beauty or something. There's a, a set of um, stencils that Stampin' Up! released and that's what I used. So they've been out of stock a bunch. I don't know if they're in stock right now at the time of recording this video or not. So um, I will link to everything that I use today and you can grab it over in my online store if it's Stampin' Up! or you can purchase directly from the links. Um, I am a design team member for the Rabbit Hole Designs, but I am not an affiliate. So I will provide links for you, but I do not earn an income off those links. But I do appreciate it if you use the links or and or let me know if you've purchased with them because then I can let them know that, hey, by the way, one of my videos helped you out, you know. Um, I met Marianne, the owner of the Rabbit Hole Designs, in October at the um, Stamp and Scrapbook Expo. And I've, I've already shared about that, but... Um, I did meet her and she's a small business owner just trying to make it and God love her because this is a tough market right now. Um, anyway, so now we're going to stamp our poinsettia and our little swag. Now you all know I've used this poinsettia a ton and my friend Kelly Taylor, um, drew this, uh, swag of pine cones and pine needles and the poinsettias. I think they're beautiful. And then I'm going to color them. And of course, you can tell everything in this video is sped up significantly because this video was over an hour long. So I had to edit it down and speed up a whole bunch of the coloring. Otherwise, we would be here from now until eternity. So, um, and I value your time. I know, I know that you, every moment that you spend with me watching my videos is precious time. And I know that. So I want to just quickly apologize for the lighting going in and out and being weird. I'm pretty sure it must have been like cloudy this day or something. Again, it was in September. I'm not 100% sure what was going on that day. But thank goodness I filmed myself making this card because I feel like it's a really beautiful card. And I was super happy to be able to share it with you here on YouTube. By the way, speaking of YouTube, while we're coloring, let's talk about a few things. I am almost at 40,000 subscribers. I am like 300 subscribers away. So if you are watching this video and um, you are not already subscribed to my channel, I would super appreciate it if you would click the subscribe button. I want to do something really fun when I hit 40,000. I just feel like that's such a big milestone. And I have been the slow and steady snail wins the race girl. Uh, I, I've been on YouTube for 10 years and it's taken me 10 years to get to that many subscribers. And so for me personally, it feels like a really big accomplishment. And what I share on YouTube is so niche, it wouldn't be everybody's cup of tea to watch card making videos, right? So when you hit a significant number of subscribers, it feels like a pretty big accomplishment. And I'm pretty proud of that. So if we can hit 40,000, I think we're going to have to find a way to celebrate. I would love for you guys to drop me ideas in the comments below. Sometimes I struggle coming up with ideas for my own like stuff. It's so weird. I can have somebody come to me and be like, I need an idea for X, Y, Z, whatever it is. And I can come up with a hundred ideas for somebody else. But then when I try to come up with ideas for myself or my own business or whatever, I just, I don't know. I like struggle. I fall flat. <laughs> so if you have an idea of how we could celebrate together, I would love to hear it. Um, of course, I've thought of giveaways. I've thought of um, doing some fun, like, 
um, like a live thing. I don't know. I don't, I don't know exactly what I want to do, but I just know that we should do something to celebrate the occasion. So drop me a comment below. You all are the ones are the reason I'm here. You're the wasn't reason that I can even do this for a living. So I feel like you should have input on how we celebrate this milestone together. Um, okay, moving on to the little fox. I'm going to tell you right now that I, this video was recorded so long ago, I have no idea what colors I use to color everything. I can see that I wrote down some colors there up in the right hand corner for my reds which is probably for the poinsettia and the scarf. But outside of that, I got no clue. He's a cute little red fox and reddish brown, I guess. And then here I'm just arranging and deciding how I'm going to add all these pieces. And then I'm coming in with my Stampin' Blend markers, which will match my ink blended background. And I'm coloring the edges so that I don't have this white edge now. Let me explain this. I actually kind of like a white edge. So it, it just depends on the card. In this card in particular, I felt like because the white edge was there, it was making the everything look um, disconnected and not cohesive. So I decided to um, color the white edge of my die cuts to match the background of this card. I wanted it to kind of all look cohesive. Now there's lots of times I create and I make a card and I leave the white edge on a die cut because I actually kind of like it. There's something about the white border I think looks really cool. So it just all depends. So I'm using Stampin' Blend markers instead of Copic markers to match my background here because I used Stampin' Up inks to ink blend the background. So it just only made sense for me to bring in my Stampin' Blend markers to get the best match. You will see when I put the poinsettia down that I actually come in with a Copic marker to match the green because I used Copic markers to color the greenery. So after I got done doing that, then I was ready to add my poinsettia and do the same thing, the color matching and coloring around the edges. And I'm gonna be honest with you, doing this here where I'm like adding this on the edges makes me really uncomfortable. And this is why, it's new to me. So anytime I am trying something new, I get a little nervous and I think that that's normal for everybody, not just in card making, but probably in everything in life. And, um, so the other reason I get nervous <laughs> is not just because I'm trying something new, but because I'm afraid I'm going to mess up. And after putting this much effort into this card, I would probably cry if I, <laughs> if I screwed it up really bad and had to start from scratch. But then I have to walk myself back from that fear and realize that if I did mess it up, like let's say the coloring on the edge didn't match, the all I'd have to do is re-stamp and recolor the swag. I wouldn't have to redo the whole card, but it's like in my head when I'm creating, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'd have to redo this whole thing. So you can see how slow I'm going here. I did not speed this portion of the video up for this exact reason. I wanted you to see how slow and careful I'm being as I color the edge of this die cut. I learned this technique from my friend Kelly, who happened to be the one that drew this poinsettia. Um, it's something she does in literally like all her videos where she has die cuts because she does not like a white border around her die cuts. So I will admit the other thing is that when I did this for the first time, I was like, it's not going to look right. It's going to look weird to color on the edge. And I should have known that if it looked weird, Kelly wouldn't do it in the first place. But in my head, I was like, this is going to look strange. And so I got really hung up on that. And 
that was one of the reasons I had never done it. So here I'm actually adding a little bit of the branch into the poinsettia die cut just so that it all looks cohesive. And then um, I'm going to trim off the excess overhang of the poinsettia and the pine cones and pine needle branches. I'm going to do that from the back because I find that that's the easiest way to do it. So here I'm going in with the brown to match the pine cone. And then I'm going to go back in with the starry sky to match that top little starry sky corner. And then I'll be done. But you can see how long this took. It took a fair amount of time for me to match everything and be very careful and make sure that I was doing each piece correctly so that it would look right. I couldn't have just gone all the way around the poinsettia all in starry sky because then where it lays on top of the branches, it would have looked funny. So anyway, I hope that helps. All right, here we're going to trim off the excess and then we're going to just add some more details to this card to finish it up and it will be all done. So while I do that, I want to mention a couple of things. Um, one is that I have been working super hard on a really fun new thing that's going to happen in the creative vault in the new year. And I'm not really talking about it too much yet, except I've just kind of been like laying out there that, Hey, something's coming. I will say that purchasing a membership now would be amazing, um, because you will be on the very beginning edge of all the fun stuff to come in the vault, there's going to be lots of new things that are going to be happening in 2024 with the vault. Um, but I've been working hard on that. And then obviously you see, I've been doing a lot of design teamwork with the rabbit hole designs and prickly pear and misty. And I've really been enjoying the process of all of that and learning how to do all of those things. And then what has been going on in my personal life? So just a little story time, because you know how we roll around here. If you're new to my channel, um, first of all, welcome. We're super happy you're here hanging out with us, friend. And second of all, um, I always share little bits and pieces throughout my videos of my personal life, things that are going on. So you can kind of think of me as a card making vlogger, I guess. Um, with a V, vlogger, video, logging. Anyways, um, so I will tell you, I started taking um, horse lessons. Now, I say horse lessons because if I said horseback riding lessons, that wouldn't really be accurate because I'm not riding. I'm doing groundwork, ground school with um, horses to reacquaint myself and get to know them again and to understand them better because my daughter has a horse and you all know that you followed that journey if you've been around here for a while and I um I used to ride when I was young and not very well uh, admittedly that's a story for another day um but yeah I used to ride and I loved it and I loved being around horses, but they also always kind of scared me. And I'm realizing now that they scared me because, well, there's a whole list of reasons. <laughs> but one of the reasons um, is because I didn't understand them. So I've been going through the process with the person I'm working with to learn how to understand horses better and their communication and their psychology and this has been something really, really fun for me to do just for me. And I honestly can't tell you how much I enjoy it. Like it's, it's been really therapeutic and it has also just, I don't know. It, I don't know. I didn't even really know how to explain it to you except to say, I really love it. I'm getting a lot of joy from it. And it's an hour of my life, one day a week, where I'm thinking about nothing else, nothing except that horse. And that 
people is worth its weight in gold. Because if you're a mom or a wife or a woman or anybody, um, I feel like the female species especially, (laughs) we tend to be always in our head about a lot of different things. Like thinking about what's next, thinking about future, thinking about the past, thinking about other things all of the time. Well, when you are with a horse, you are not thinking about anything else except that horse and exactly what's going on with that horse. Because first of all, that's the safest thing to do. And second of all, it is just, I don't know, like it consumes you. So for me, it has been really, really fun. I've been doing this for a little bit, but I haven't talked about it because it's kind of one of those things I feel like it's mine. Like it's just this thing that I'm doing for me. And I didn't really want to like share it yet. And now I'm comfortable sharing it. And so, um, and that in of itself is like a step, just the fact that I'm willing to share. So anyway, I, I am excited to share it with you, and as I continue along the journey, I'll have little updates here and there, I'm sure. Um, but that's it. That's what's been going on. Not much else. Things have been pretty quiet. My daughter had an award ceremony for water polo, and she got the academic athletic award because she kept a 3.7 or higher while she was playing water polo, so that was cool. And her coach had a lot of nice things to say about her. And we're done with water polo. Thank you, Lord in heaven. I am so glad we're done with water polo. It's just taxing, you know, on the parents to like drive and pick them up and drop them off and get them to all the different things. And then on top of it, she had the horse and her horse was kind of being neglected during that time. And that was hard. And so anyway, we're done with water polo for the year. She'll probably play again next year but we have a different plan for next year um just to make sure that things aren't quite so chaotic and stressful so here i'm using um back to the card real quick i'm using some of these enamel effects from stampin up to add little dots into the center of the poinsettia i use the gold ones and then here on the other part of the card i'm using them to add little dots um that are silver so that it kind of just looks like bigger dots of snow around the sentiment. And that's it. The card is finished. Oh, got to go back in. Oh, I went in and I used my gel jelly roll pin to go over the top of my fox to make it look like the snow was falling for reals. Because obviously the snow would not just fall behind him <laughs> if he was standing in the snow. It would fall on top of him. Um... I did not add snow to the poinsettia and swag, though, which is interesting. I'm just actually realizing that. I added a little bit of snow to the pine cones by um, going over, like, some of the edges of them to make it look like snow had piled up on them. But I probably should have done little dots of snow over the top of the swag and poinsettia, too. Although, would a poinsettia and swag of pine cones and pine needles be in the sky? No, it would not. So, you know, it's a card, people. It's a card. (laughs) High in sight, I do kind of wish I would have moved my sentiment down a little bit and kind of not so close to the poinsettia now that I'm like looking at it. But all in all, I think it's a beautiful card and it turned out great. If you have made it this far into the video, God love you. This was a little bit of a longer video. And I did try to shorten it up, but some of the videos, you know, you just can only shorten them so much or you just lose too much content. If you have any ideas for stuff you would like to see in future videos, let me know. Don't forget to comment and let me know how we should celebrate 40,000 subscribers. I really do want to come up with something fun. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for stopping by and I will see you in the next video. I appreciate your time. Bye-bye.